Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Um, if you are looking at me right here, you are the, high, uh, the low def uh, live viewers. Welcome aboard. If you're not watching this live here at 4.30 in the morning at 12, 9, 2014, then go there where my hand is in front of the screen now. Go there. You are high def. Uh, you can find them at the correct views in the mediaspeaks.com. All right, friends, you didn't tune in to hear all that. You tuned in to hear who in the world won the dunce cap of the month this month. Well, friends, we are swarmed. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How do you get the 14 articles on the dunce cap of the month? You have to skip the first few. And in this case, you have to skip a whole bunch. Guys, here's the ones that are not <laughs> going to be covered. TSA confiscates a ray gun belt buckle because of terrorism. This is the reason.com. No, um, it is not stupid enough to get the Dunce Cap of the Month award, but it is pretty dumb. It looks like it would have looked fake in 1950. I I'm just being real, guys. It looks really lame. Uh, again, go to the reason.com. Again, these are runners up that haven't proven to be stupid enough to make the actual report that is coming. We have feminists demand censorship of the Princess Leia catcalling parody video. Therefore, the feminists believe they can parody Star, Star Wars, but anybody else should not be allowed to parody them. All right, guys, uh, we also, this is from, um, real quick, the ones we're not going to get to, as it were. Student photos of skimpy Michelle O. lunches raise ire of parents. Uh, this made a lot of sense. Basically, the schools are starving the children or giving them such limited options that they just choose to not even eat. Sometimes a combination of both. All because Michelle Obama's fat ass decided she wanted to try to tell everybody else in the world what they're, in America, I should say, what they should be eating without any repercussions for her. How's that? Um, this also didn't get the dum D uh, mentioned because I've already sent a dunce cap to John Kerry over this issue. But it's a climate activist claim that the deep freeze that we are experiencing here in early winter slash late fall is due to global warming. Once again, we are freezing because the planet is warming. You can find this article... Um, it was posted on InfoWars. It is uh, written by Kit Daniels, November 11th. Look it up. It's another one. Uh, and again, it probably would have won if we hadn't already dealt with so many of these. And then there is the first story that I'm reporting on. This, in some ways, should have won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. But I'm looking back, and it was actually October the 28th. I probably should have given it the Dunce Cap of the Month Award last month, and I didn't. And it is so unbelievably stupid. I mean, again, the VA hospital here could... They very easily could have, and I would argue now, looking back, maybe should have won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. That turned away from a hospital, from VA hospital, I should say, for post-traumatic stress disorder treatment during Mental Health Awareness Week. In other words, they were so worried about promoting Mental Health Awareness Week that they sent a man home with mental health problems because they were too busy to help him due to mental health week. Don't worry, uh, Cleveland is still playing very prominently in our award this month. How's that? Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, this is from CBS Cleveland, that's why I say that. A military veteran says uh, her regularly scheduled veterans affairs appointment 
for high-level post-traumatic stress disorder that isn't, uh, oh, my mommy was mean to me, so now I can't work. It's not one of those people. This is actually the people that are seriously suffering from a real post-traumatic stress disorder. Back before it came a catchphrase to get free welfare. It says uh, that appointment was canceled because Mental Illness Awareness Week, a move of irony, she says, in part of larger problems with veterans' health care. Army Reserve, excuse me, Major Leslie Haynes tells the Military Times that she was turned away from her Northern Indiana VA health care system PTSD clinic appointment that she had scheduled months in advance after being told that the cancellation was because the staff was intending an inspirational speech for Mental Illness Awareness Week. In other words, uh, it's a miracle she didn't commit suicide when she asked for help from people that couldn't be there because she could have potentially been looking for suicide because they were at a meeting to stop people from committing suicide. Guys, Zero Hedge, China's latest ghost town, a $50 billion fake replica of Manhattan. Now, you're going to ask me, Sam, how in the world did you not give this the dunce cap of the month? How, how is this a runner-up? How? Why am I listening to you talk in your hat? Why? <laughs> because I can't afford to send dunce caps to other nations. Um, maybe next year I'll be able to. Go to the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes to a better show. As it stands right now, I can't afford to send dunce caps out of the U.S. If I could, this would have won. Listen to this. They are building stuff that nobody really wants nor needs, and there will be a day of reckoning, sums up yet another mega ghost city project under development in China. As NBC News reports, China's $50 billion knockoff of the Big Apple, that is to say New York City for you Drake fans, Near the port of Tianjin, some 120 miles from Beijing, complete with its own Rockefeller Center and Twin Towers, no less, has been billed as the world's largest financial center in the making. But this Manhattan still has a long way to go. Ian Williams explains, and there's a link for this, that nothing has improved in China since the last highlighted ghost city phenomenons. In other words, unless they're planning on winning the nuclear war that they're hoping to have, which I wouldn't be surprised, and maybe that is what they're thinking, I can't really find any logic to any of this, which is why it is in fact on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. China's $50 billion knockoff of the Big Apple sits on a river bend, much like its namesake, near the port city of Tianjin, some 120 miles from Beijing. It says, a recent video shows the construction that began in 08 on the back of massive credit boom unleashed in China after the global financial crisis appears to have ground to a halt while the stunted version of the Rockefeller Center and its twin towers appeared to be complete. In other words... In order to look impressive or in order to, uh, you know, win the nuclear war and have some place to put all the uh, well-to-dos while the refugees swarm their nation, they're spending billions. And I understand that they're buying a lot of gold, but they have not bought a lot of gold, enough gold, I should say, to cover this dumb deed. All right, guys, um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the actual mind-blowing stupidity, we have one more here that needs to be mentioned. Productsofdesign.sva.eu has this. Social Solitude from Product to Platform in a Nutshell by Eden Liu. Uh, God lover, this is something that Christelle <laughs> would buy. I say this because... She lives for her games and her phone. (laughs) 
you have to look at this. It's like a tent that you wear around your waist. It utterly covers your face. And it's made for you to use your phone in. In affirming artifacts, a course which rapidly moves students from products to services to platforms, in and of itself a very good idea. I wish Stark State had had it where I went. The class of 2016 student Eden Liu created Nutshell, a speculative enterprise aimed at reducing stress and providing a kind of respite from urban life. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Uh, utter BS is another way to put it. Students were asked to, quote, redesign the next thing uh, they threw out. And in seven weeks, Eden Liu took a discarded sandwich wrapper on a journey through prototyping and branding, ending with a nutshell. A pod-inspired platform for productive breathtaking, uh, break-taking. Yeah, I bet. Inspired by the rapper, Eden initially identified potential user groups in students and professionals who habitually fail to take proper lunch breaks. So we don't need a change in the way that lunch breaks are made to look like the movie Metropolis. We simply need to put ourselves in a body tent and relax using our phone's iPod. It, it looks like a body tent. You don't have to have the, you have to be an idiot to buy this. Go and look this up. In other words, the answer is to sit there, tick, tick, tick on my phone in my tent, rather than demanding a lunch break. How do these people manage to be smart enough to even know how to breathe? Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Uh, I've got. One, two, three, four more mind-blowingly stupid stories to get to. Before I do get to them, I want to invite you to check out the Arcadia Grill. Why? Because I want you to eat the best food you've ever had. That's why. I want you to have some of the best drinks that you've ever consumed. And the way to make that happen is to go to the Arcadia Grill. Let them know you heard about it on The Correct Views. Ask for Maria. Tell Maria you want a uh, 151 and Coke. Drink up, enjoy, friends. They have great restaurant. They have a great restaurant. They have great food. They have wonderful drink prices. They're on Court Avenue in downtown Canton, and you heard about it on the Correct Views. Moving on to the uh, last section of the uh, Dunce Cap of the Month Award show here, which is brought to you, of course, by Mike McLaughlin. And look him up on Facebook. He is a wonderful writer, and you can find his work and hear all about how to buy it. Mike McLaughlin, Facebook.com. Video showing Dem Democratic congressman proposes a moat <laughs> around the White House. Uh, for those of you that maybe, I don't know, are, are Usher fans or something, a moat is a body of water that sometimes contains spikes, alligators, and or both. Mikhail Phelan, I love Mikhail Phelan's writing. He, he gets one story on every dunce cap show. I swear he does. Um, Democratic, Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen suggested building a moat around the White House Wednesday during a House Judiciary Committee with the U.S. Secret Service. How could anybody be so stupid? How could anybody be so dumb? Uh, speaking with acting U.S. Secret Service Director Joseph Clancy on the agency's recent scandals, Cohen suggested that a large body of water surrounding the White House could possibly keep out potential trespassers. For those of you that haven't laughed enough at this idiot Cohen, as soon as you're done watching this show, look up Peter Sellers' Moat Pink Panther. And think Cohen. Would a moat, he said, or asked, a moat, a moat, water, six feet around, be kind of attractive and effective. Attractive and effective. Uh, yeah, they think that idea is wonderful. I'm seemingly stunned by the suggestion, and you can see why. Director Clancy instead suggested the possibility of a larger fence. Yeah, before you build a moat. Arguing that the public's accessibility to the White House has historic value. 
Sir, it may be. One of the things we balance is obviously the accessibility to the White House. We recognize the historic nature of the White House and how the American people should have access to the White House, Clancy said. So we are now in the process of working with our partners at the National Park Services to see if we can do something with defense. No, what we need to do is build a moat. And I let, let me guess, the answer, you still got the drawbridge, so people still have access. <laughs> While it would, in fact, in theory, I must admit, be constitutionally sound, you're an idiot. That's why you're on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, but you did not win. No, on to another story that didn't win but came damn close. Guns.com. Purple plastic confetti guns on a school bus lead to a 911 call. How many of these have we heard? I'm going to zip right through it. It's written by Jennifer Cruz. I'm going to zip right through it because, let's face it, it's stupid, but we've heard it time and time again. We're probably going to hear it next month. It's not dumb enough to win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Two Florida middle school students caused a bit of a commotion, it says, on their bus Wednesday morning, prompting a call, 911 call about a possible gun, which turned out to only be a purple plastic confetti shooter, which a student had brought to school to celebrate a birthday. Hey, Mo, it's your birthday. How can you not look at the gun prior to the 911 call? <laughs> we had two students that brought a party favor. It was a purple plastic confetti gun, but when it went off, it did making a popping sound. Therefore, a popping confetti gun gets a 911 call. It says, once we heard the pop, even though it maybe wasn't exactly the sound of a gun, maybe wasn't exactly, that's like saying maybe Rihanna isn't utterly exactly, you know, possible exactly Mozart. Just wanted to be a precautionary, and we called for backup, Townsend said. That Townsend is why you're mentioned on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Look up Flagler County Sheriff's Office. That brings us to the last two stories. And that means this one has to be the runner-up for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and that's what it is. Ten-year-old suspended for pointing imaginary ray gun. Now you're not even allowed to hold a, not only is your confetti gun gone, as we've covered before, your, your Hello Kitty gun is a uh, terror. Now the imaginary gun is terror. Steve Watson wrote this one, if you want to look it up. In a now all too familiar scenario, a fifth grader has been suspended in Massachusetts after pointing an imaginary gun and saying, pow. So on the last story, we had the little confetti gun that made a sound that could be like a real gun. The pop of a confetti gun could sound like a real gun if you happen to be an idiot. Well, now, <laughs> so can the word pow. Ten-year-old Nicholas Taylor it must be the devil, was suspended for two days by officials at Stacy Middle School in Milford. Why am I doing this show? So that you can call the Stacy Middle School in Milford and let them know how stupid they are. Following the incident which took place in the school cafeteria, Nicholas, who has no history of bad behavior, is said to have cut in line at the lunch queue and mouthed laser words, quote, Coming out of an imaginary ray gun, otherwise identified as his own finger, pointed at other students in line. Nicholas himself told reporters that he was not pointing the weapon at any other students, but was simply amusing himself. The assistant principal, who is an idiot of the school, cited the incident as a threat because he's a freaking moron. On a conduct slip given to the fifth grader, giving justification for suspension. Anybody that puts this on Stay Middle School Milford, uh, in Milford, anybody that puts this on Stay Middle School's Facebook page, let me know what your favorite charity is and I'll promote it next month. Prove to me that you did it. Take a screenshot. Nicholas's father, who is the guardian of common sense in this story, Brian Taylor, 
is unhappy with the school's actions, as he should be. I think it's very slanderous toward Nicholas and his character, said Taylor, to say the least. It was non-threatening. He's just a typical boy with an imagination. So what we have here is a boy pointing an imaginary gun and he gets suspended for it. So go and do me a favor. You want your favorite charity promoted on this show? Put this show on Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, Middle School in Milford's Facebook page. Take a screenshot of it and I'll promote your favorite charity. Friends, that brings us to... The Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner! Yes, indeed. It doesn't get stupider than this, guys, and it does, in fact, deal with guns. And Cleveland, as I promised you earlier, gun control advocates demand toy gun ban after Cleveland cops kill kid. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award is going to the mayor of Cleveland because after the cops accidentally killed a kid with a gun, and I've already said the kid acted like a moron, even for a 12-year-old, he acted like a moron. Does that mean I think he deserved to die? No. You use a little bit of restraint here. Where was your taser for crying out loud? But yeah, the kid acted like an idiot. The cop was an idiot. So the answer to it is to ban toy guns. Dunce Cap of the Month Award right here. Gun control advocates are demanding a toy gun ban after Cleveland, Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio, after police killed a child who was carrying an airsoft pistol on a playground. He was also pointing it at people and scaring the daylights out of them, which as a little kid, even my parents used to always tell me, especially my dad, you ever do that, and I'll put this gun up your woo-hoo. Yep, that's exactly what he said. Uh, while many are asking why the police didn't act with more caution on Saturday when dealing with the boy, 12-year-old Tamar Rice, others are instead calling for a ban on toy guns. Those others are who is winning the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Why are these toy guns being produced? Alexander A. tweeted, We need laws to prohibit this type of toy. Yeah, because we don't want to teach kids to respect guns. We just want to teach them to obey. Idiots. It's okay if you're obeying somebody who's smart. Um, he also said the toy guns were part of the problem. A commentator on a Fox News article covering the story shared a similar view. Without the existence of this real-looking toy gun, we wouldn't be discussing this, she wrote. No, if kids were allowed to play with guns like they always were, we would not be discussing this. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, who has won the Dunce Cap of the Month award that you are looking at, has even proposed a toy gun buyback in July which would have prohibited the sale and manufacture of gun replicas. The proposal thankfully didn't pass, but it's likely that Jackson and other nanny state politicians will exploit this latest police shooting to renew calls for a toy gun ban. It says such a, a ban will only restrict personal liberties while doing nothing to stop cops who use lethal force force as much as they can. American police are taught to treat any act of non-compliance as resisting arrest and as and a supposed offense that justifies the use of pain compliance and in cases like that of Kelly Thomas, lethal force, lethal force it is necessary to subdue the victim. So then brings us to the dunce cap of the month award. No, I have not trimmed it down yet. I will in a moment. I designed it, Castell folded it into a nice point. Here's what it says. Don't ever teach kids to respect guns. Teach them only to give them up for you are gods. There's a picture of a gun. It says a God-given right. Uh, there's the words I just read to you. Right here it says Cleveland rocks, an idiot mayor. As you can see, making sure you guys are on low desk get to see the whole hat. 
stand on high now. Look at my uh, nice little Toys R Us logo here uh, before I read you the rest of it. Yeah, no toys, no presents for Christmas, as King Diamond says. And, of course, it says dunce down the middle. The dunce cap of the month award, which has not been trimmed yet, as you can see. In a world of other stupidity, I wrote, it is easy to understand how even leaders of major U.S. cities like Cleveland can be led by someone devoid of even a basic understanding of our God-given rights, as explained ever so clearly in the Constitution of our nation. It is thought by people like you that it is better to teach kids that our God-granted rights are to keep and bear arms is better feared or given up than respected. When a kid plays with a gun, it is not important to teach respect for the gun or respect for God who granted the right to protection to all of us, but it is rather, I wrote, good to teach the children, or the child, I should say, that all guns are bad, and that way only bad people will ever own guns in the long run. And it's for this reason that you, Mayor Jackson, win this month's Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I do this every month. That will be sent to Mayor Jackson. You're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look them up. Do you want a better show? Do you want a show more often? A more professional-looking show? Better gear, better lights. You can donate to me at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Just put donate in the comment line. And I thank God for you when you do that, friends. Thank you for listening. Good night and God bless.